Grand Archive Dawn of Ashes first edition Kickstarter product is just getting to backers now. We have Alter Edition coming out next month, and now they hit us with this. Let's talk about Grand Archive's second set, first expansion set, Fractured Crown. Hey everyone, it's Dan with Main Deck, and you know if it's Grand Archive news, I do have to cover it here. We love Grand Archive on this channel. We are super pumped. Basically, everyone in the Main Deck team is super pumped to play it, and just now they announced Grand Archive Fractured Crown, which is the name of the second set for Grand Archive that is launching in August of 2023. So I'm going to go ahead and switch. We're going to jump right into things, try and keep this to be a relatively short video for you all. And we're going to jump over to our view here. Here is the key art that just got released. Actually, as I'm releasing this video, it came out yesterday. Um, so you might have already seen this today, but we're just going to give it a little bit of analysis, talk a little bit about what we're seeing here. Um, obviously, Fractured Crown, the second set of Grand Archive, which is following up on the storyline that begins in Dawn of Ashes, where these champions, Lorraine and Rai, find themselves in uh, Cambria, which is sort of an Arthurian legend based. Um, they're not called planes in Grand Archive, it's just called a world. And uh, so they've come from the Grand Archive to deal with some sort of kind of crazy problem that's happening on the plane, kind of get everything, not plane, the, the world, get everything back into balance. And Fractured Crown is the set that is following up on that storyline. So we'll see what comes of that. But for now, what we have here is the follow up to that storyline where we have this beautiful key art, and I've kind of zoomed in on it just a little bit here, and we have Lorraine right in front of some giant, I don't know, bird-like beast. We have a beautiful logo with this crown crystallizing and breaking. Um, so this is just very exciting because this is uh, the first time we've gotten to really see this. Now, Grand Archive has been teasing for a little bit. This has been on their website for a while, but it just got updated to say Fractured Crown now. The important thing, there's a, a few important things to know about this set. So this was previously called a supplemental set. It's now being called an expansion set. And what it's going to be doing is uh, just kind of playing on the themes, not only just lore wise, but also mechanically from set one. So uh, as far as we're aware, we're not going to be seeing new classes. Um, the Ranger, Guardian and Cleric have uh, are probably not coming in this set. I think we would be looking more to Elk, this uh, standard set. Um, that's coming out quarter four, which might be more like where we'll see those classes coming into play. Um, and instead, it's going to focus again, I think, just on that core cast we have, <clears throat> Lorraine, Rye. I, that's not a guarantee. I mean, I can guarantee Lorraine's in the set. That's about all we can do right now. Um, and we'll just see kind of how they they go about taking what we have already and tweaking it and adding new ideas to it. I'm certain there will be some new champion cards of some kind, just not like new classes. Um, however, they have teased a few new cards already. There's two cards that we're, they've been teasing. We're just going to talk about what we're seeing here. So the first card that they showed is Lancelot, Goliath of Asa. This is a four cost unique ally guardian slash warrior human, um, with two, uh, two power and three life. And, um, it, again, this is not indicative of a final card. I want to note that right now. This could change, um, but uh, there's a, a boy where to start here. There's so many cool things to talk about with this card I guess first of all, I'm going to talk about the artwork on this um, We have an artist that we did not see in set 1 D lamb who is coming through with some of that gritty artwork If you're like a flesh and blood fan I think this kind of artwork is going to appeal to you a little bit more than some of uh, what we saw in set 1 I don't know if this is indicative of the set as a whole being a darker tone or just perhaps Grand Archive as is branching out a little bit more is going to have, um, I think set one has a lot of uh, lighter tone, even some comical artwork, and I'm sure we'll continue to have that, but it's nice to see them branching out a little bit more to some different styles and some darker tone here with Lancelot's art. And actually in the other card, we'll see it has a, it's the same artist and a follow-up to uh, what's going on in this card. So mechanically, Lancelot has Hindered, which is this ally enters the field rested. This was not a keyworded ability in set one, but it looks like it's becoming keyworded now. He has a class bonus, uh, level two plus. Lancelot gets plus two life, making him uh, very tough to take down with five life. And then on attack, now this is very interesting. You may pay three reserve 
if you do, Lancelot gets plus three attack until end of turn. We have not seen a reserve cost on an effect yet in set one. That There are no cards that do that. So we can already see in set two how they're going to be starting to push the boundaries a little bit mechanically. Not, um, not even necessarily the boundaries, just push into some uh, area that they haven't explored before. Um, if you are level two plus and you're either a guardian or human, you can play Lancelot and then attack with him. If you pay the three, you are talking about a five attack, five life ally for four, which is absolutely massive. The kind of thing that you typically only get right now under Tamer when you hit a high level with a high pride amount or something. So a uh, very cool um, ally to have. Certainly seems like um, if you can manage that reserve cost. Now that reserve cost, that's mean, that means putting three cards down from your hand uh, to power them up. But uh, the way I kind of think of it right now and my, my just sort of initial analysis is it's kind of like just playing an attack for card from your hand to deal damage. Um, you're paying three cards to get a plus three damage on your attack, which is um, when you don't actually have to play the attack card, right? You're just paying the cost for it, which is uh, pretty solid. I mean, again, you got to win the game somehow. So being able to um, push for more damage uh, optionally when you need to it, with the extra cards in your hand, that seems really nice to me. Um, there is some speculation going on. I, we've seen some in our Discord about what if this is part of Guardian's core mechanic, if Guardian is going to be about sort of dumping your hand. Again, I don't think we're going to be seeing Guardian uh, in this set. Um, I, I think that we, the, the devs have been very clear that that's going to happen later, but we're going to start to see some cards, some more cards that bridge the different classes a little bit. And this could perhaps be something that we see more of on Guardian cards when we get to that point. So... Um, We'll, we'll have to see. Jury's going to be out on that one, but uh, that's kind of the card right now. That's what we have. It is normal element. It's going to be able to be played in anything. Of course, you really want this class bonus level 2 plus to make him a, a big beefy boy. Um, the other card we see... Oh, no, actually, I want to mention the flavor text really, really quick here, too. So this flavor text seems very incomplete. He says, I greet the burden of a thousand lives. But when we look at the second spoiler, it actually finishes that flavor text, too, with resolute stand once again showing Lancelot here with boundless resolve and forsakenness. So um, I think that's really cool. Again, look at this kind of gritty artwork here um, showing Lancelot standing resolute above his enemies here. I think this is his, I wasn't sure if this is him charging in front or enemies trying to take him down or something, or if everyone dies but he's on his team dies, but he stands above them. I'm not totally sure what it's going for there. Given that he's sort of a guardian, um, I would, I would, expect he just like survived the attack or something but um I, he also looks very i mean this is super dark so maybe maybe lancelot is is our dark warrior in the storyline here who's going to be um fighting lorraine's going to be fighting against him or something now resolute stand is a three cost action it's a fast action with level two plus this is a cool effect you may activate this card without paying its reserve cost if you do skip your next draw phase um that is a powerful ability, being able to just out of hand play this at no cost. You do have to skip your next draw phase, but I mean, if it, the difference is you lose the game or you get another turn without a draw step, that's, I mean, I'm going to take the get another turn personally. Um, and the effect here is I, a number of people have, no, have not noticed the thing that makes this very powerful. So I'm going to point it out to you all just so you do for sure. Whenever target unit, that includes your champion as an option, would be dealt attack damage this turn, prevent three of the damage, would be dealt attack damage this turn. Throughout the whole turn, you have a three damage shield on target unit. You want to make sure Lancelot doesn't die, go for it. But I think the thing that's going to be very powerful is the opponent who's playing a go wide strategy or something gets ready to start attacking you. Resolute stand out of hand for free if you're level two plus if you want to. And now all of their attacks get three, the first three damage blanked from every single attack that they perform. That can be absolutely game changing. If we do end up with sideboards in the competitive game, that's going to be a sideboard card for sure. And it's certainly, I think, a mainboard optional card because outside of Rai, most decks currently are playing things to attack with. Um, so that is certainly going to be useful there. Um, 
I think it's a very cool card. I love seeing I love seeing some of these new mechanics, like you may activate this without paying its reserve cost. Um, again, that's where the speculation, guard, maybe Guardian dumps their hand, and but then can like free activate things. We're not totally sure about that, um, but certainly is a Guardian-esque card in the way that it prevents damage. So um, very cool, very exciting to see these coming out. Again, Fractured Crown is releasing in August of 2023. Um, these are just some early teasers. We are sure to see more teasers coming out. And again, these are not necessarily the final teasers. These may change. But um, for now, this will just give us our first look at where the mechanics are starting to go and perhaps where the art style is starting to go in set two. It's a very exciting time um, with, to be a Grand Archive fan with the first edition, first set product arriving here. Um, we, I have not actually gotten my shipping notification yet as of posting this, but as soon as I get that, I'll be scheduling our live stream where I'm going to be cracking through a ton of boxes trying to get these collector rares. Um, at least one of them. I want to get one of them. So, uh, make sure that you swing back for that. That'll be a live video. Either if you're catching this late, it's already posted, or it'll be a live video that you can go check on and get ready to watch. So, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Uh, that is our little look at the teasers for Fractured Crown. Please let me know what you think about Fractured Crown in the comments below. Are you excited for this? Do you like the style of it? Um, do you like this gritty art style, all that kind of stuff? Do you want to see more Guardian stuff? I want to know what you guys think. I can't wait for it. And uh, I can't wait to crack open my boxes of first edition either. So that's going to do it for today, guys. Have a great one. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching another main deck video. Main Deck is sponsored by JDUP Sports Cards and Gaming. Visit jwwcards.com and by our amazing patrons. Get exclusive content and other cool perks on the Main Deck Patreon. And uh, hey, while you're here, I bet you'd like one of these videos. Go ahead, click one. I know you're gonna love it.